Today, we're talking about the gene editing tool, CRISPR. Short for clustered blah, 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 blah. It's been a buzzword in the scientific community for a little while now, ever since its potential for gene editing was first uncovered. And don't get me wrong, I was way on the hype train, especially during the pandemic, like when Walter Isaacson's book first came out on Jennifer Doudna, and I heard about how it like transformed the vaccine and all the stuff that was happening. It was incredible. But you know, time moved on, and then my mind moved on to other things like microbiomes, cryptocurrency, sleep research, Longevity, longevity and, and of course, course the last invention that man ever need make artificial intelligence. But now it's time to revisit that gene editing technology CRISPR because some of those seeds that were planted back in 2020 are starting to germinate. So this video, we're gonna be talking about some products that are having a real world impact today. Did you know that a company called Biotherapeutics has taken a group of AIDS sufferers and started injecting them with a CRISPR-based therapy? And this potential cure uses CRISPR once injected in your body to actually hunt down all of the DNA associated with AIDS and cut it all up and like throw it away, make it useless. And think about what an accomplishment it would be if that actually worked. If we can go in and find all of a certain type of DNA and snip it out. And as incredible as the original CRISPR research is, since its debut, we have now discovered six different branches of evolution for CRISPR. And one of them amazingly is actually targeting RNA, not DNA. This stuff's absolutely incredible. We're at the tip of the iceberg right now. Look, I can guarantee that the long-term trend for the kind of things CRISPR is gonna do are going to make a serious dent in some of the major diseases in the world right now. There's gonna be huge agricultural improvements, climate change improvements, and even biological data storage, thanks to CRISPR very soon. Nerd up, my friend. As a quick refresher, you can think of CRISPR as like really precise genetic scissors, snip, snip, snip. They go and they read the genetic code, the nucleotides until they find the pattern. That is a signal for them to make a snip. But if you put it in two different places, you can snip out a code and it will float away. And if you cut it out just right, those other two pieces will be reattached. Imagine the vast winding roads of a huge city that could represent all of the DNA that you might find inside of a cell. Then you can imagine each of the buildings that are alongside the road as a essentially nucleotides. They're a guide place where the snip can be made. CRISPR is like a self-driving car with a GPS system that can just go right to any location you program in and make the snap. Just like scissors cutting out a coupon from a newspaper. It's that powerful. Okay, so let's go through some of these new CRISPR use cases. They're pretty interesting. So there's new developments that make it so CRISPR can easily do some kind of diagnosis test. So not actually utilizing the snipping to go in there and do something, but to actually cut things out to find out if they even exist. Some new technologies such as Sherlock and Detector both use CRISPR's ability to find DNA or RNA sequences to detect if a virus is in a system. And this includes the COVID-19 virus and some kind of cancer. So how cool is that? CRISPR is now helping us understand early diagnosis for certain types of cancer. And it's not just that, CRISPR is also great for making crop improvements. So we're talking about agriculture here. So by modifying the genes inside of seeds and insides of plants, we can make crops that are actually more resilient to diseases resilient to pests, resilient to environmental stresses. And it's not just about improving the yields, but it's also about reducing the reliance on chemical pesticides and enhancing nutritional content. CRISPR is also a valuable tool in the fight against climate change. So imagine that, we start replanting the Amazon rainforest with new trees that actually suck up way more carbon dioxide than the ones did before. And as a result, we start to reduce the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. People are also exploring ways that you can use CRISPR to actually protect endangered species and restore biodiversity in our environment. A lot of people call the humans the great extinction. What if we use CRISPR to bring back a lot of stuff that we had kind of destroyed? So it's not so much like we're playing around with nature, but we're just like restoring the stuff that we decided to mess up. It could potentially be used to create genetic resistance to some of the diseases that are starting to decimate certain animal and plant populations. And of course I touched on it before, but like what about biological data storage? In this rather futuristic application, researchers are actually starting to use CRISPR in a very innovative way. You can actually encode information in the DNA of living organisms. We're like a walking hard drive. I mean, we're already a hard drive of information about how to make us and how to do human things, but wow, with CRISPR, you could also throw in some of your favorite movies in there too. You know, the fact that RNA and DNA just like fold up so freaking tiny and they unfold and they can be read in multiple ways and like, 
there's mechanisms now for editing it means like a ton of data storage in a very, very tiny little space. They're incredibly dense. They can sort of duplicate to preserve themselves. They can evolve in certain ways and they're just a long lasting data storage method in a certain way. And now let's talk about the possibility of actually curing HIV because of gene editing. And well, HIV, that sneaky virus that's behind AIDS has actually been around since 1983 we still don't have a cure. Now, good news is we have a lot of drugs. They can help keep it under control in ways that we never had in the past. But imagine being able to say that we've cured HIV for good. I think this is very close to happening. There's already some trials I wanna tell you about. So this company, Biotherapeutics, cooked up something that they're calling EBT-101 and it is not your average medicine. It's a one-shot gene editing treatment. Now, early tests are showing that it's safe. I mean, this is crazy new technology, but this is being tested on some people who are in really bad situation. They're willing to try some like brand new drugs and it is safe so far, according to what I've read. So first you have to get your head around just how small DNA is. The DNA that makes up the HIV virus is actually a quadrillion times smaller than a person. And it's not just small, it's also a master at playing hide and go seek with our immune system. And that's where EBT 101 comes into play. Now remember CRISPR comes from a bacteria which actually evolved it as a mechanism for cutting up and remembering what viruses it had fought in the past. So what they've injected in these people is actually finding that quadrillion times smaller than us snippet of HIV in every single copy all throughout our whole body and just snipping it out. So it can't do what it does. And the reason that we're actually here with human trials is that because researchers at Temple University have already used CRISPR to hunt down and remove HIV DNA in mice and rats back in 2020, the seeds that were planted that I was talking about earlier. Then a couple years later, it was used in monkeys with similar success. So that line of research has paved the way for it now to be in humans and so far, so good. Of course, the journey isn't over. We're talking about really experimental medicine. You're not gonna see this like showing up in the pharmacy anytime soon. It needs way more testing on way more people before the FDA is gonna be like, yes, this is a treatment that just anybody who has a diagnosis can use. But if you take away whatever happens with patents and the ownership over the mechanism, CRISPR itself isn't super expensive. So if it is something that becomes affordable, the actual mechanism is something that could actually be distributed in third world countries. And we could maybe, without incredible amount of effort, try to remove HIV from the planet. Imagine saying goodbye to AIDS forever. That's very possible in our lifetime. If there was a will, there is, looks like there's a way right now. Another really interesting use case for CRISPR is helping with cholesterol. So in Philadelphia, there's this conference, it's called the Big Heart Health Conference, and a research group announced that they've used CRISPR to tweak the genes of 10 different people. Now their goal in tweaking the genes was actually to lower what's known as the bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. Now it's the first time CRISPR has been used in this kind of a context to help with cholesterol problems, but they're doing it, even though I know it seems like injecting trillions of copies of you know the CRISPR Cas9 complex into people with like a certain guiding GPS system for it to go find DNA shouldn't be on the radar right now it absolutely is and unlike the HIV experiment so far this one definitely has a big red flag warning we should talk about right now in this cholesterol CRISPR study so far sadly one person has passed away so this person passed away from heart issues and another of those 10 people actually had another heart related health scare they didn't die, but like that's two out of only 10 people studied. Interestingly, the scientists say that is not related to the actual CRISPR LDL lowering thing that they were doing, but I just, when you just think about the numbers, that's pretty unlikely. And like, why did they let these 10 people in if they had serious heart conditions beforehand? So I'm pretty wary of this one. So the actual concoction that they were injecting in these 10 people is called Verve 101. And at the conference, the doctors went on to say like, it's probably not because of this, because this is highly targeted. I don't see how it's related, but they said that in theory, it can only zoom directly to the liver, which is where the body's cholesterol factory is and make tiny changes only in a specific gene that's called PCSK9. I guess this gene PCSK9 is the manager of bad cholesterol. So in theory, by changing that, snipping it out, then you can really make a big difference in somebody's cholesterol level. And just like the other studies with AIDS, Verve 101 was tested successfully in mice, rats, and monkeys. So that's why it's even getting injected in humans in the first place at this point. But if we assume that this technology is coming, it has great promise, and that in the future scientists are gonna figure out if, if it was because of this, why, and if we can get to a place where CRISPR being injected into us and cutting out DNA, adjusting our DNA across the entire body works, 
there's incredible benefits coming. In terms of LDL cholesterol, there are a lot of people dying every single day from having just clogged up arteries and heart attacks. And millions more are on drugs, like forever drugs, like Lipitor, that you're just like, oh, I'll just take that the rest of my life. And that doesn't seem really healthy either. Whereas in theory, something like Verve 101, you inject it, it goes in there and goes right to the liver and it should cut up those genes and all of a sudden, you're not making the LDL in the first place and there just isn't a lifetime of pills for Big Pharma to sell you. So it might not be in their best interest or they might end up charging astronomical amounts of money just to inject this. Or maybe it's like kind of open source code and even though they try to patent it, it just gets out on the internet and people all over the world just do the injection and have the cure and Big Pharma gets screwed in the long run and it's probably better for all of us. I don't really know how it's all gonna play out, but that leads me to the next thing I wanna talk about, which is how there are actually six different types of CRISPR now. It's not just like the one CRISPR. There's all sorts of little branches doing different things. And you know, I had to squeeze a little bit of AI into every video I do, cause like, that's who I am. So let me explain how AI was used in essentially the world's most complex treasure hunt to find new versions of CRISPR. So this is research that came from enemy of Jennifer Doudna, according to Walter Isaacson, he stole a lot of stuff from her, but he's also really smart in his own right, Feng Jun from MIT. And his team used AI to find the jackpot. And this algorithm found six different versions of CRISPR, including one that's really a big deal because it targets RNA instead of DNA. Okay, so we'll start with the baseline. The first one ever found, CRISPR-Cas9, that's the entire complex. It's like the Swiss army knife of genome editing. But now all these other variations are kind of like having exacto knives and kitchen knives and all sorts of like other types, shapes, sizes of snipping tools that can do even more robust things throughout the body. One of the other versions can actually go in there and unwind some of the DNA that's wrapped around histone. So instead of just being able to like find something and snip it, it's actually like, oh, I can find something that the other ones can't find because I know how to unwrap everything and look more thoroughly. Some of them have systems for like double checking. So they're usually more accurate in what they find, but they're also just take longer and they're slower. And if you remember how a cell works, you transcribe from the DNA into RNA, the messenger RNA that can slip in and out of the nucleus. So RNA is in all sorts of other parts of your cell where the DNA isn't. And now there's a CRISPR that can go in there and find stuff too. So it's like you have your blueprint to make these proteins that are out there doing things, but maybe you fix the blueprint, but they're still out there causing issues. Now, maybe we have a new tool to actually go out there and do this. Now, this is super early on. We don't even understand how the cell works and how all these things fit together, but AI is helping us with these kind of problems. And that's why you have to remember that CRISPR is way more than just a gene editing tool at this point. It's a Pandora's box of applications. So I sure hope that the scientific community and policymakers and the public are up to the task of thinking about how safety implications need to be put in place now, where we wanna dry the line, how we're gonna coordinate on a global scale, and how it's gonna feel when you hit that subscribe button and help me get to my next goal, 9,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.